Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. In today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by David Reifel. David is a fourth-year graduate student at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. He received his bachelor's degree from Brown University, where he studied the synthesis of glycopolymers under Professor Amit Basu. At UIUC, he is in the Sarlaw Group, where he works on the total synthesis of bioactive natural products. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, David. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Matthew, for the kind introduction and for the invitation to share our work on the total synthesis of Darabactin A that was recently accomplished through collaboration between researchers at UIUC and Merck. Darabactin A is a heptapeptide with antibiotic activity isolated by the Lewis Group in 2019. It has potent activity and exceptional selectivity towards gram-negative bacteria. Its unique activity profile is a result of its novel mechanism of action. Namely, Darabactin A binds to the beta barrel assembly machinery, or BAM complex, located on the outer membrane of gram-negative cells. The indole-containing macrocycles hold the peptide backbone in a beta sheet conformation that facilitates this binding. In addition to its impressive biological activity, Darabactin A has a complex chemical structure. Two strained macrocycles, a novel alkyl aryl ether, and a tryptophan lysine carbon-carbon bond are each considerable hurdles that chemists must overcome to complete a total synthesis of Darabactin A. Additionally, due to hindered rotation about the indole, the eastern macrocycle exhibits atrope isomerism. In early model systems, we examined several reactions including amide bond formation, etherification, the Mitsunobu reaction, or carbon-carbon bond formation as the step to close either the eastern or western macrocycle. And while these reactions worked on linear systems, they were unable to overcome the energetic barrier required to close the strained macrocycles. From these model studies, it was determined that preorganization was required to close these rings. Turning to precedent from the Boger and Reisman groups, we attempted to close the rings through a Lorac indole synthesis reaction. Working on the western macrocycle in isolation, the ring closing event proceeded in 72% yield with the desired stereochemistry as supported by NOE between the protons highlighted in red. Similarly, using the deshydroxy tripeptide linear precursor, the eastern macrocycle was closed via Lorac indole synthesis in excellent yield and as a single atrope isomer. In a more elaborate setting, we attempted to close both macrocycles in a single reaction. We were thrilled to isolate a bis macrocyclic product in nearly 20% yield, but upon examination of the rosy spectrum, we determined that the eastern macrocycle had been formed as the incorrect atrope isomer. Deep protection of the indoles and heating in DMSO was unable to convert the eastern macrocycle to the correct atrope isomer. Presumably, formation of the incorrect atrope isomer results from steric clash between the western acetate and the eastern test group during closure of the eastern macrocycle. With this knowledge in hand, we re-examined our strategy to form the bis macrocyclic core of Darabactin. We elected to form the eastern macrocycle first. The more flexible alkyl aryl ether in place of the western macrocycle might be able to move out of the path of the large silo group as palladium inserts across the eastern alkyne. Testing this hypothesis on a system without a halogen on the western airing to avoid chemoselectivity problems, we were delighted to find that we could isolate both atrope isomers of the eastern macrocycle in a combined 50% yield with a 2.9 to 1 DR favoring the desired one. Since we needed another functional handle to perform the second Lorac reaction, we had to prepare a system with both airings pre-functionalized. However, we had to answer the question of how we could engage one aryl halide in the presence of another. Presumably, oxidative addition into two orthohalogenated acetanilids would occur at roughly the same relative rate. We elected to install an iodide on the eastern airing in hopes that it would be more reactive than a bromide, as is the case in traditional palladium cross-coupling reactions. With this key step in mind, our revised retrosynthetic analysis relied on two separate Lorac macrocyclizations. We also elected to split the molecule into four different fragments to increase the convergency of our synthetic approach. The first fragment was a propargelic ether that would serve as a bifunctional block to forge both macrocycles. The second was a beta aryl lysine that would be used to assemble the eastern macrocycle. The final two blocks were more straightforward. An alkynyl dipeptide that could be formed through a Nagishi coupling and the protected side chain of Darabactin. The synthesis of the propargyl ether began from commercially available Garner's aldehyde. One two addition of TMS acetylene was controlled by a chelating Lewis acid to provide a single diastereomer of the propargelic alcohol. An SNAR reaction formed the desired ether, and the nitro group could then be reduced and protected as an acetanilid. 
The N-O-acetal had to be deprotected carefully to avoid removal of the Bach group, and we found that bismuth tribromide was completely chemoselective for acetal deprotection. The resultant alcohol was then oxidized directly to the carboxylic acid, and the acid was coupled to a benzyl-protected serine derivative. Mild hydrolysis of the methyl ester had to be done with Nicolaou's trimethyltin hydroxide reagent to avoid beta elimination of the phenol and TMS deprotection of the alkyne. With a scalable route to the central amino acid in hand, we turned our attention to the beta lysine motif. A scalable route to the beta lysine moiety was developed by scientists at Merck. The synthesis of this piece began from mesylated serine derivative that is accessible in two steps from commercial serine ethyl ester. In situ elimination of the mesylate and a HEC reaction with 3 bromoacetanolid delivered the desired enamide in 71% yield. Bromination of this enamide and treatment with DABCO delivered a thermodynamic olefin that is primed for a cross coupling reaction. Boron alkyl Suzuki coupling brought in the lysine sidechain with the nitrogen protected as a thalamid. The key hydrogenation of the tetra substituted olefin was accomplished using phenyl BPE ligands at 500 psi of hydrogen. These hydrogenations are typically very challenging, but our colleagues at Merck utilize their high-throughput hydrogenation facilities to quickly identify these conditions. Directed CH iodination using conditions adapted from the Glorious group delivered the desired iodide that would be used for the key halogen-selective Lorac macrocyclization. Finally, boron tribromide-mediated deprotection of the CBZ group gave the second key piece for our synthesis. The third block could be made through a copper-mediated coupling with the organo-zinc species derived from iodoserine and a brominated alkyne. Hydrolysis of the ester, peptide coupling with asparagine methyl ester, and a second hydrolysis delivered the third block. The final piece, the protected serine phenylalanine sidechain, could be made through a simple peptide coupling. With each of the blocks in hand, we were set to test the key halogen-selective macrocyclization. Peptide coupling between the central dipeptide and the beta lysine gave a linear precursor to the eastern macrocycle. Treatment with bis triterbutyl phosphenopalladium at 40 degrees instead of the usual 80 degrees again delivered both macrocycles in a combined 56% yield as a 3 to 1 mixture of diastereomers, favoring the desired one. Additionally, at this lower temperature, no debromination of the western airing was detected by LCMS. We could then hydrolyze the ethyl ester and attach the side chain through peptide coupling. It was important to remove the ethyl ester and bring in the sidechain at this stage because attempted hydrolysis without the TMS group on the eastern indole led to removal of the eastern acetate. While not immediately detrimental, any unprotected indoles were highly acid sensitive due to an electron-rich indole that would promote elimination of the benzylic ether upon protonation. With the sidechain attached and the acetate still intact, the TMS and Bach groups were removed with HCl and the second alkyne was attached through standard peptide coupling. The second Lorac macrocyclization delivered protected darabactin A in 51% yield as a single atrop isomer. With this material in hand, we attempted several stepwise deprotection sequences relying on hydrogenation to remove the benzylic ethers. Poor solubility of the starting material and catalyst poisoning prevented successful hydrogenolysis, so instead we turned to Lewis acidic deprotection methods. Treatment of protected darabactin with TMS bromide, TFA, and thioanisol removed the TESS, TRIDL, CBZ, and 3-benzyl groups. Then, ethylene diamine could remove the 2 acetates and the thalamid to provide darabactin A in 51% yield for the final deprotection step. The stability of the benzylic ether motif under these harsh acidic conditions demonstrates the inability of the acetate-protected indole to promote an acid-catalyzed elimination. In conclusion, our group at UIUC, in collaboration with researchers at Merck, completed the total synthesis of darabactin A in 16 steps, longest linear sequence. Through this process, we also developed new strategies for the synthesis of unnatural amino acids and reinforced the utility of the Lorac indole synthesis as a method to close strained macrocycles. With that, I would like to thank all of my coworkers in the Sarla group, specifically those who worked with me on darabactin A, Marco, my co-author, and Jonathan, and of course, my advisor, Dave. I also want to thank everyone at Merck who helped drive this project to completion. It was a very valuable experience to work with them, and I am honored to have been a part of this team. Lastly, I want to thank you, Matthew, for the kind invitation to share my work, and everyone on YouTube for listening. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to David for joining us to share your chemistry with us. 
If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.